Welcome back to Fix This, Build That. Today I'm gonna to show you a simple way to add drawers to any workbench. I just built this basic two x four work table slash workbench and I put my new CNC on it. And man, did it have a lot of stuff and I needed some drawers in a bad way. I wanted to organize things and take advantage of that open space below. And you can use this method to add drawers to any workbench and add as many or as few as you'd like. Now, no matter what type of workbench you have, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take stock of what you're working with. I removed the lower shelf of the table and I took some measurements. Now, I'm only doing drawers in the front portion of this deep table, so I'll split that bottom shelf in half later. Now, I had 22 inch drawer slides on hand, so I'm designing the drawers to be 22 inches deep so I can use those. But you can change that to meet your needs for any size drawers that you want. The drawer cabinet design is basically going to be plywood sides with rails connecting them to define the drawer box openings and a divider in the middle. So I'm going to go with two shallow drawers on the left and one deep one on the right. I cut down some plywood on the table saw to make the sides, divider, and rails for that box. Now test fitting the sides before moving on is always a great idea here. There are four rails connecting the sides, two at the top and two at the bottom below the drawers. They fit in between the sides so to get a perfect fit I used an old relative reference trick. I measured the exact distance between the legs of the workbench, which I knew was an even 45 inches since I just built it. But instead of trying to subtract the thickness of the two pieces of undersized plywood and get that number, I set my miter saw stop block to 45 inches. Then I just used two scraps of the plywood as spacers and made my cuts. And this left me with perfectly sized rails. After doing a test fit and giving a little nudge for some wiggle room during install, I cut all the other rails to size. And cutting the end square first before making your final cut is always a good habit if you're using rough cut plywood. I set up my Craig K4 and I drilled pocket holes on the ends of all the rails to make the connections to the sides. Then I grabbed the sides and I started assembling the drawer cabinet. Now here's a tip when using pocket holes on the edges of plywood. Whenever possible, you want to angle the pocket screws so they're going away from the edge, not into it. If you secure them going into the edge, you're much more likely to blow out the plywood and have a connection issue there. I clamped the sides together and I secured one screw on each end and then I removed the clamp and secured the other two screws. Then I flipped the sides around and did the same thing for the other top rail. Now to attach the lower rails, I turned the drawer cabinet upside down and I used the divider as a spacer. I had cut another piece the same width as the divider so that I could use it in this step as well and I'll cut that extra divider down to be a deep drawer side later. Now using spacers and relative reference to keep your drawer openings parallel and square is always better than measuring and marking. That said, next I measured and marked for the center divider. <laughs> hey, you can't be perfect all the time, right? I'm putting my divider right in the center, but again, you could split this however you wanted. You wanted to do a 60-40 drawer split or something like that. I used a square to position the divider and then I clamped it in place on the front and the back. Then I pre-drilled two countersunk holes on each bottom rail and secured it with one and a quarter inch screws. I flipped the drawer cabinet over and you can see how it's coming together here. It's just going to slide right in place. So after checking the center divider again, I drilled and screwed it into place on the top rails as well. Then I moved the work table back into place and I was ready to put the drawer cabinet in. And on a side note, if you just wanted a solid open bottom, you could just leave that bottom shelf installed. I removed it because I'm going to be doing a sliding tray here. Now the assembly was a perfect fit. Maybe too perfect actually. I realized later there's a small hump from a knot on the lower right two x four that was hanging things up. So you probably wanna check your base before you go all happy Gilmore and just start banging in the cabinet. But after a few hundred little tap tap taparoos, I got it right in place. And speaking of tapping, feel free to tap that little subscribe button if you haven't already. Now the drawers are gonna be inset into the workbench frame, but overlaid on the drawer cabinet that I just put in. So I pushed the box back the thickness of the plywood drawer fronts, and then I secured it to the side and the top bracing with countersunk screws. The backs of the plywood sides weren't totally secure since I didn't use a bottom connector. So I cut a two x four to size and I added a third upright support to each side of the workbench. This gave me a place to secure the back of the cabinet box at the top and the bottom to make sure those drawer slides will align properly. But if you're using a more rectangular workbench, then this shouldn't be an issue because it's probably not gonna be this deep. Now I wanted the sides to be nice and steady because I'm mounting drawer slides in a large pullout tray on the bottom. It's a nice option for low storage to have this tray down here because it's easily accessible. Or I could also put another robot machine that might kill me in my sleep one day. I don't know, either way. 
Now, anyway, I just cut one and a half inch strips of plywood to make the frame for the pullout tray. I used the same spacer trick on my miter saw to cut the tray front and back to size, as well as the sides and inner bracing. Now for a clean look, I'm using pocket holes on the inside faces of the sides of the tray frame. I clamped the parts down on my workbench and I assembled the frame with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. And here's why I said when possible before. To get the best connection, I'd want the pocket holes on the outside of the frame so that the screws would be going away from the ends of the front piece. But sometimes design aesthetics override optimal screw placement. And that's okay. I guess. I'll be using the bottom shelf I took out earlier as the surface for the tray. But first I needed to cut a piece off of it for that back stationary area that's not going to be covered by drawers or a tray. I measured the distance behind the drawer cabinet that I'd installed, and I ripped that half inch MDF bottom to size to fit it. Now since it already had countersunk holes in it, I just reattached it in place in the same spots. I'll use this back area to store a dust vacuum, a computer for my CNC, and also accessories for the other robot, which is actually going to be a CNC laser. Now next I needed to cut the leftover shelf piece to fit the pullout tray. I ripped it to its new depth from the table saw, but the panel was too wide for my table saw sled to cut. Now this is the perfect spot to use the new Craig Adaptive Cutting System. It's a new system that combines a track saw and a collapsible workbench with registration dog holes. Basically you can use the track to cut straight lines or set the stops at 90 degrees to the track to make square cuts on wide panels like this. Now the Craig system as well as all the Craig products that you see me use today are available at Woodcraft, the sponsor of today's video. They have stores in over 70 metropolitan cities, so you can either pop into one of those and check out the Craig products firsthand, or use their website if they aren't close to you. Now, I'll have a link to all the Craig items and supplies that I use for this build down in the description, so you can go check that out. Now, thanks a lot to Woodcraft for sponsoring this video. I attached the freshly cut tray top to the frame with one and a quarter inch screws, countersunk and spaced haphazardly throughout. <laughs> Just kidding. You know that I spent 10 minutes laying those out. <laughs> I'm using an Accuride 3607 drawer slide for that bottom tray. It's got a cool feature that allows the tray to lock in the out position. It installs like any other drawer slide though, and I just attached it to the side with the mounting screws. Then I used a quarter inch piece of ply as a spacer, and I put the tray in place and then secured it to the slides before pulling it out and making the final connection. Now next I got to cutting the parts for the drawers. I just have the two shallow drawers on the left and one deep drawer on the right. So I cut parts for six sides in their fronts and backs. The drawer assembly is pretty straightforward using pocket holes on the fronts and backs. I've actually gone to an even easier method than I used when I shared my easy DIY drawers video last year. I no longer cut the grooves in the bottom to hold the panels. I just go with a full size bottom panel that's glued and stapled to the bottom. Now this approach lets you square the bottom with the panel and it holds it in place permanently with no rattling. Then I use a chamfer bit in my router to hit the sides of the drawers, which hides the plywood bottom from sight. Let me know in the comments what your preferred drawer assembly method is, and if you think that I should do a video on my new method in a comparison versus the one that I did before. With the drawer boxes made, I could get some custom storage going. I showed you my CNC, the X-Car from Inventables, in the beginning, and all the bits and accessories it had. So I wanted to break it in by making some custom bit and tool holders to contain all those parts. I jumped into Easel, the Inventables software. There's a project section where users can upload designs and I use those to give me a jump start on designing my own. I made a custom tray to fit all the clamps and hold downs and one for all the bits, collets, and wrenches. And I'm excited to use the CNC in the shop for custom work. And I'll have links to the machine and the software below. You can actually create your own Easel account and play around with different designs on your own for free before you even think about buying it. Next I installed the drawer slides using wooden spacers to hold them off the bottom rail, and then another larger spacer to position the top slides on the left. I used the quarter inch plywood again to space that bottom drawer, and I used three quarter inch spacers to lift up the second drawer while attaching it. I installed the deep drawer on the right as a nice little complement to the shallow ones. A mix of deep and shallow drawers seems to be the best in my experience versus having them all the same size. Now for the false drawer fronts or show fronts, I'm using a continuous grain piece of plywood. I cut a piece tall enough to fit the vertical opening for the large drawer. Then my shop buddy Fred helped me out with the cuts, which was nice and easy with that dedicated stop lock on the sled. Thanks, Freddy. After that, I took the piece of plywood for the shallow side and then I just ripped it directly in half. The blade curve cut gives me an eighth inch reveal and now everything fit perfectly. Now, since there isn't a spot to rest the fronts on for mounting, I just made my own. I used a one and a half inch strip of plywood and I screwed it to the underside of the bottom rail with a little bit of an overhang. 
and this worked out really nicely and it saves any awkward clamping or having to use double stick tape. I used a clamp to hold the bottom show front in place on the drawer since it was easily accessible and I secured it through holes that I drilled in the actual drawer front earlier. Now for the top drawer and the deep drawer, I couldn't clamp the show front easily like I did on this one because of that top rail of the workbench. So I drilled the holes for the handles first and then I used those to temporarily secure the drawer front to the box. Now, now I could pull it out and permanently secure it from the inside and remove those outer screws. So those are two good options for mounting your drawer fronts and either of them will work just based on the situation you have at hand. Now after that, it's simply attaching the drawer hardware to finish them off and you got a bay of drawers in your workbench. My custom holders went in the drawers along with some of the supplies for the CNC on the deep side and then the laser went down below. Now I'll add in the computer, the dust collection, and some other things later, but adding drawers to this workbench was a much needed upgrade, and I hope it really works out great for you as well. If you wanna see some more shop projects, I got a playlist queued up for you right there. It's got some good ones in it. If you wanna build the work table and the drawers that I did in this video, there's a link down below in the description where you can check that out and get the plans. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.